it's kind of funny. Anyway, all right, so we're gonna get going. Um, we will need the dumbbells a little bit for damp, but not too much. Uh, damp, sorry, I'm just checking my cheat sheet. Uh, yeah, I guess I did a couple different changes. Most of you can follow along. Um, I'll kind of cue, cue you through it. The first one that we've been doing is that lateral lunge where you're then putting that rotation on. And then the difference for this week is we're gonna push back to a single leg. So you're gonna push back, hopefully find your balance better than I just did, and then reach back out. And I would go, I don't know, let's do like three to one side, and then we'll switch over to the other side. So that's the first thing that we're doing for damp. I'll talk you through the rest. Uh, 40 seconds on, 12 seconds in between. The first round might be a little bit longer. And then we're going for three rounds. So here we go, starting with that nice lateral lunge. As you do that lateral lunge, thinking about pulling back into your hip, right? And not pushing into your knee and putting that rotation on top. I hope everybody had a nice holiday weekend. Maybe you couldn't get out with Saturday with the snow, but the last two days weren't too bad. Yesterday was beautiful. And then switching sides if you haven't already. And again, just opening up those hips, getting that rotation through your torso. Next one hasn't changed from last week. This is the high plank shuffle, walking out to that nice push up, and then shuffling over, push up, and then shuffling back. So we're not coming up. So that's where we're starting. Walking out to your 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, turning those glutes on, energy up the top of your head. Nice inhale on the way down, forceful exhale as you push the floor away. And then shuffling over to the other side. And then repeat. Not coming up in between, but staying down. Letting your breath help you, that nice inhale as you go down. Forceful exhales, you come up. Nice, I am gonna stop the beeper just for a quick moment for this next one. Um, so this is our animal flow under switch. Um, we're just gonna kinda add a quick tap down and come back. So you're gonna start in crab position. Fingertips are either pointing back or to the side. And then you're going to pick up opposite hand and leg. So this is the same as last week. You're going to rotate, but here, you're just going to tap down and come back. So last time we held that position, this week we're not. You're going to rotate, tap down, and come back. It doesn't need to be quick, but it does need to be controlled. Right? So that's our under switch tap. 40 seconds. Here we go, starting down on the ground. Fingertips pointing back or to the side. Picking up opposite hand and foot. Thinking about always pulling in towards your center line. I'm already getting warm. <laughs> it's only the third exercise in. And you lightly tap down and then you come back. And you're trying to control it. Unlike I just, I didn't quite control on that last one. But you guys I'm sure are totally controlled. And then for my shoulder people, because I know I have a couple of you, let that shoulder rotate. Don't lock it down. Let it be mobile. Nice. Grabbing one dumbbell, your reverse lunge reach. Let's start with our right leg forward. Finding that 90-90. Hands in the opposite of the front leg, reaching up and over. Coming back. Finding goal post arms and then rotate towards the front leg. Come back to center, step together, switch to the other side. Find that lunge, reach back. Come back to center, goal post arms, rotate. And step together. And then you're just now repeating side to side, alternating as we go. Thinking about 90-90 with the legs. Squeezing that back butt cheek. Nice. Keeping that dumbbell, we're gonna go into a sumo. 
Nice hamstring stretch. Drop your hips. Curl the dumbbell. Press overhead. Drive through your heels. So nice hamstring stretch, nice wide athletic stance. Drop your hips, lift your chest. Curl that dumbbell, reach overhead, drive through those heels. If you happen to have two smaller dumbbells, you can do our regular sumo reach and grab the two smaller dumbbells. I know that I cannot do that overhead reach with heavy dumbbells. My shoulders say, no way, Jose. This is the last one, and after this, we're back to the beginning. So that lateral lunge with the rotation, pushing back to that single leg. I don't know why I put my doubles like way far away. <laughs> so lateral reach, thinking about rotating up to the ceiling, push back to a single leg. That's a little bit better than my demonstration. We'll see if my balance stays with me for the rest of the class. Maybe, maybe not. And then switching to the other side. Really try to find that single leg balance, thinking about that supporting glute squeezing, pulling in that belly. Enjoy that stretch. We have five more seconds. I'm gonna be lopsided, so I'll fix it next time around. Our high plank push-up shuffle. We're not coming up, we're gonna stay down in either a shuffle or a push-up. 10, 11 to one, two. So as you walk out, try to really turn on glutes, lift that belly, shoulders away from your ears. Nice big inhale. Forceful exhale as you push the floor away. Shuffling on over to the other side. Really thinking about energy off the top of the head. I'm almost giving myself a double chin, thinking about my ponytail reaching for the ceiling so I don't get a chicken head. There'll be little shifts in your hip as you shuffle, but try not to exaggerate it. It should be minimized. What's next? Earn your switch tap. Down on the ground. So when you do this crab, you're just barely picking up your six bones. It's different than our crab a walk that we always do, where we're pressing up those hips. This one, you're just lifting your hips enough to clear the ground, right? So I'm not pushing up here, and I'm not somewhere in between. They're low. I'm almost going to sit on them, but I'm not. And again, opposites, you're trying to tap down with your opposite foot and hand at the same time and come back. Should be nice and controlled. Make sure that you let that shoulder rotate, right? Don't lock it down. Let it move how it has to. Your reverse lunge reach with the rotation with one dumbbell. I'm gonna bring these back. <laughs> back it up. There we go. Uh, we started with the right foot last time, so let's start with the left foot. If you don't have it, it's not that ma it doesn't matter that much. Just making sure that you're even, Steven. So really finding that nice 90-90, anchoring through that front heel, squeezing that back butt cheek. Really thinking about that huge back diagonal reach. Letting everything open up. Nice. What's next? Sumos! So just one dumbbell, just because these are a little bit, or mine, are a little bit heavier weight. If I had like two fives or two threes, I could go for the one right where you're doing one arm, the other arm, and then drive through. But with the heavier dumbbells, sometimes that's just those little tiny muscles aren't going to do that for you. Those posterior deltoids, really letting those hips open. Oh, 
keep on forgetting my curl. And then join that hamstring stretch, right? Don't rush that. Uh, last time through, we're starting with our lunge. I'm lopsided, I got two to the left. Last time, so I'm gonna start going to the right. You're lopsided, fix it. Pushing to that single leg, taking that focus up. Hi, Miss Heather, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Really trying to find that single leg balance as you push back, right? Those transverse abdominals kind of hugging you in. That exhale will help with that. About, I don't know, two more seconds maybe. Or one. And then we have our shuffle push up. 10 to 11, over to one to two. I'm gonna start at one to two. I'm gonna mix it up. So taking that moment to really set up that push up position, squeezing those wedges, lifting that belly, relaxing that neck, letting your breath help you. Shoulders away from your ears. Those shoulders are very active. Pulling down the back of your rib cage. And as always, we don't care how low you go. We do care that you're maintaining your core. That's where the butt cheeks and the belly are gonna come into play. Staying down on the ground, we have our under switch tap. From animal flow, this is where that comes from. Fingertips back, ideally. If you don't have that shoulder mobility, fingertips out to the side. Barely lift your butt cheeks off. Opposite hand, foot, touch down. Come back. Tap down, come back. That's why it's called under switch tap. Tap down, come back. Really thinking about pushing the floor away with the supporting shoulder, right? We're not collapsed down on it. We're stabilizing through it. Always pulling in towards your belly. If it feels impossible, you're probably trying to go up and over the other leg instead of under the other leg. Trust me, I've taught this enough. I see it happen. Reverse lunge reach, grabbing one dumbbell. 90, 90. That's with your legs. I'll show on a diagonal round three. So I'm always reaching up and over this front leg. I'm closing myself up, meaning I'm rotating in towards myself, I'm not rotating away from myself. And then adding that rotation is new for this week. Dumbbell should always go in that top hand, so you're gonna switch as you go side to side. Reach, 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 reach. Week four. It's kind of crazy how long we've been doing this. All right, and then the last one is always oh, our sumo squat, curl press. Almost forgot. So that nice athletic stance. Let your torso head be heavy. Dropping those hips down, you're still active through your joints. You're not just collapsing down. Curl, two press, drive through those heels. And as you go into that overhead press, you are trying to get those biceps by your ears. So depending on how mobile you have, or how much mobility you have in your shoulders, better way to say that. <laughs> nice. All right, jam's done. Moving along, before we take a water break, we're gonna move right along into the other section. Plank. We've been adding on to our plank. We have five minutes of planks today. What? Yes, you heard me right, five minutes. 30 seconds, you're gonna go from side, forward, side, forward, side, you get the picture, until five minutes are up. We will skip the last forward plank so that we're even on our sides. So just listen along on that one. So here we go. Let's start with our left side down for our plank first. 30 seconds in each position, this beat is yours. We'll take a water break after this. So left side's down. I'm thinking about the bottom butt cheek squeezing, bottom waistline lifting, stacking my shoulders, stacking my hips, breathing, smiling. 
there should be no tension in your hands, right? So I'm okay if they're clapped together, but I don't want you gripping. Shoulders away from your ears, butt cheeks squeezing, belly lifting. Energy out the top of your head, energy out your heels. One minute down. Four more to go. Other side plank. Should be even squeezing, easy peasy lemon squeezing. We've been adding a minute every week. For those of you who are just joining in for week four, welcome. See, it's just like you were at the gym. Oh man, I came in on week four. Breathing, smiling, four plank. So again, I'm really thinking about pulling my pubic bone up into my ribs or my belly to turn the anterior part on. I'm sending energy through those legs. I'm squeezing those butt cheeks. And I'm breathing. Two minutes, down. Back to your original side plank. And again, I'm really thinking about this whole bottom side body. Can I point this way? <laughs> Butt cheeks squeezing, belly lifting, or the side body lifting, like something's poking into my waistline. Back to your four plank. You're halfway through, that's two and a half minutes.
right, I'm grabbing some water and I'm just gonna walk over and turn down the heat. Augie turned it up for me, but it's a little bit too much. And then we'll get going. And then I'm also going to crack the door. Okay. okay, so our circuit is four times through. 40 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, I think there's only one. Uh, there's one change and one addition. So and when we get to those, I'll probably stop the timer. Um, and then I'll explain them. The first one is our tricep kickback, right? So that's the one where we're in that nice high plank. And then you're gonna row back that dumbbell. Once you have it row back, you're gonna kick it back, and then you come back down. So it's like a little renegade row, but then you extend that arm. So that's your first one, and I'll talk you through the rest. There's one that's totally new, which I think actually the second one in is kind of new for this week. I'll stop the timer. So 40 seconds on, 10 seconds off, so a little less break. Here we go, our tricep kickback. So finding that nice high plank, squeezing those butt cheeks, lifting that belly, pull back, kick back. Pull back, kick back. If you're finding this way too intense, you can certainly come off the dumbbells, right? It's just a little bit of a three-point balance, two three-point plank with a little extra ditty on top. Or if it's hard to support on the dumbbell, right, you can always support on your hand. That's fine. You're still going to get the work. Nice. Um, this one's new. Uh, I can do a variation of this in his, can I remember, can I remember? Uh, in his class that he used, the laundry detergent jug, I don't know if any of you have taken that on YouTube, but kind of a variation on that. So that lateral lunge that we did, you're going to do a lateral lunge, you're going to reach both dumbbells kind of out to the front of your foot. And I'm still pulled back into my hip, right? So I don't want anybody pressing into their knee. Then I'm going to rotate as I come up. Now I'm in a lunge. My hips change directions, right? And I'm going to pick up my heel to rotate, I'm not going to torque in my knee. Um, my knee people, because I know I have some of you today, be aware of that. So to reach to an overhead press with a rotation. We're gonna stay on one side for the full 40 seconds, and then we'll switch as we go through the round. Let's step out to the left to start with, and here we go. So grabbing those two dumbbells, it's your lateral lunge, Pulling back in your hip. Your front foot, I didn't talk about this. It can move slightly, but I would pick up the toes to move it, right? Or it can stay facing front. It's an internal rotation in that hip. That's fine. I just want to make sure that the rotation comes from your hips, not from your knees. So kneecap should always be facing the toes on this. Next. Uh, next. Oh. What? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, people. I'm reading my own notes and I don't know what I meant. Oh, yes. All right. We're in a split squat, and then we're doing curl to press. So just a variation on a theme. Last week we did just overhead press, the last two weeks, I think. Sorry, it took me a second to decipher my own, my own writing there. All right, here we go. Let's do, let's stick with left foot forward. We'll keep it consistent. Left lunge. Stay 
So finding that nice 90-90, squeezing that back butt cheek, and curl to press, and then switch. We're gonna stay on this side. I am staying nice and low, so I don't wanna see this start to happen with your back leg, that it starts to extend, right? 90 degrees, it stays there the whole time. As one dumbbell goes up, the other one comes down. Yes. Um, our roll-ups, this is the one we did it last week. We're just coming up to sitting. Dumbbells are always reaching up to the ceiling. Um, if this is too much for your shoulders or you're having a hard time sitting up, do it without the dumbbells. So I'm gonna be down, I'm pressing up to the ceiling, I'm thinking about chin to chest, and I'm coming up to sitting. Then I'm scooping my abdominals, and I'm rolling back down. If you need to, you can always bend your knees too. Right, that's also okay. So here we go, roll ups. <laughs> it's kind of a weird angle, the roll ups having a hard time finding the beeper. And again, if you're somebody who's getting here and getting stuck and kind of tossing through it, I'd rather have you do it without the dumbbells. Work your way through it intelligently with breath and holding on to your thighs then using momentum and tossing through it, which will not build strength in the long run. Anytime you toss ourselves, especially through a core exercise, you're not gonna, feel, you're not gonna build strength. Right, all you're doing is using momentum to make yourself feel better. And I understand that, wanting to feel better, but it's not gonna build you strength in the long run. All right, T-stabilization push-up. This didn't change, I'm just adding a part B. Oh man, this has been driving nuts. There we go. I'm gonna add part B if you want to, but you don't have to. So, as always, you can do your push-up on or off the dumbbells. And this time you are gonna go to a side plank. So there's your push-up. You're gonna go to a side plank, and then if you can, you're gonna lift that top foot. Right, that's an option. If you just wanna keep them with the regular T-stabilization push-ups, you can. Right, you can keep that leg down. It doesn't have to come up. I would say if you're going for the leg lift, take your hand and put it on the ground, take it off the dumbbell. You don't want anybody to come crashing down because they're supporting on that dumbbell. So T-stabilization push-up with or without a high X position. As always, you can do the push-ups on the dumbbells or off the dumbbells. I like to do mine off, especially since these dumbbells happen to be very round and not hexagonal, so they're not very stable. Find that side plank first. Really thinking about that bottom supporting side body, and then you're gonna add the high X on top. Breathing, smiling, squeezing. Nice. Our last one, punches to flies. This didn't change. High, mid, Low, find that neutral spine, fly, fly. I'm just gonna let that beaver run. You guys just join in. High, mid, low, I don't care. It can be four, it can be eight punches, but let's do two flies. And then you're gonna work your way from low, mid, high, mid, low. Always thinking about that tailbone. Reaching away from the top of your head and shoulders falling away from your ears. No shrugging shoulders. All right, we're back to the beginning. Where was that? Our tricep kickback in the high plank. Tricep kickback in the high plank. This up. Here we go, that beat's going. Now that we know what we're doing, we're just gonna go through. There is a little bit of a shift that happens, but I don't want to see super stacked hips, right? Tiny shift. Think of all the cues that we get for your three-point plank or your renegade rows. Variation on a theme. Not a totally new exercise. 
exercise. Really stabilizing through those legs. Energy through up. Think about pulling up on your kneecaps and get to those quads. Nice. We're stepping out to the right. This is our reach, rotate, push. Right? There is a rotation, internal rotation that happens with this front leg. So let that happen. It will kind of feel like you're pigeon toed. If that's what it feels like, hey, guess what? You're doing it right. Again, think about that lateral lunge that we started with. You're pulling back into your hip and your heel, which should be a little bit more natural with this forward reach on this one. Two more seconds. Keep it with the right foot forward. This is our split squat curl press. So find a 90-90, squeezing that back butt cheek. Curl the press. As one goes down, the other goes up. Stay nice and low, especially as you start to fatigue. It is so tempting to straighten that back leg. Don't do it. Anchoring through that front heel, squeezing that back butt cheek. Breathing. Loving that you're doing this right now. Getting it out of the way for your day. Boosting your energy. Boosting your endorphins. Roll ups, down on the ground. Again, if you get stuck in this, I'd rather have you come up to that sticking point, grab the thighs, use that to help you through your sticking point, instead of just tossing yourself through. Right? I really cannot emphasize that enough. I talk about it in almost every single Pilates class. Momentum will not build strength. Momentum's great on a mountain bike, not for roll-ups. So there's a time and place for momentum, but not if you're trying to get a nice strong core. Legs can be bent or straight. I didn't mention that, but you know. I find it always takes about four times mentioning something before it's actually heard. Uh, your T-stabilization push-up with or without that high X side plank. Again, you can do your push-ups on or off the dumbbells. You are going to pick up that dumbbell to reach up to the ceiling. Ooh. Wow. There we go. That was a classic case of me not turning on my core. There we go. Um, if you can't pick up the dumbbell, if there's something going on with your shoulders, and it's enough without, then do it without the dumbbell. That's okay. Listen to your body. Make the smart decision for your body, but try not to make that the lazy decision. What was our last one? Quick hurry. Punches! High, mid, low, T fly. Punch, 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 punch. Thinking about tailbone, reaching away from top of head. I don't want to see anybody start to standing in their flies, right? That as they fly, their torso comes up. No, no, no. Your torso stays in space where you set it as you fly those dumbbells back. I correct it almost every single time in class when we do dumbbell reverse flies. There is a slight bend in your knees. Make sure that you're not locked out in your knees. Back to the beginning. Tricep kickback and a high plank. By round four, I might remember all the six exercises without looking at my cheat sheet. And since you're all muted, you can't help cue me. I'm on my own. Watching that shoulders stay over wrists. I'm noting with myself, I'm starting to slide back a little bit. So I'm gonna check in with that. Really thinking about that cross diagonal. 
diagonal in the front, opposite hip to rib to help stabilize. Our lateral lunge to overhead press, we're lunging out to the left. Lunging out to the left. So stepping out, letting that pivot happen from our feet and our hips, not from our knees. It feels like you're torquing your knee. Chances are you are. Don't do that. Make sure that you're picking up feet, right, to move. This is where zoom is a little troublesome. It's hard for me to see that tiny detail in your body. But I'm grateful that we have it so we could have kept you guys going all through these months. A reverse lunge, yeah, split squat, curl to press, left foot forward. It is a reverse lunge, but you're not coming out of it, right? You are stepping back into a reverse lunge, I wasn't lying. But then you hold in a split squat. And really try, if one's coming down, the other one's coming up. So you don't have that brief pause where they're both down. Makes your core have to work a little bit more. How's that back leg? Still at 90? I hope so. After this, we have a roll-up. Again, making the right decision for your body. Or rather have quality of movement than quantity. Or suffering through it with bad form. It takes twice the amount of learning time to fix something that was programmed wrong in your body than it does to learn it right the first time. So don't push through it if you don't have the right form. You're just gonna have to work harder to fix it in the long run. After this we have our T-stabilization push-ups to a high plank. T-stabilization push-up to a high plank, um, high X plank. Sorry, I should add the X. Um, the beep's going. I was gonna say something else. Oh, <laughs> don't go into that high X plank if you're not feeling it. This is an advanced exercise. So if you're not there today, that's fine. Make the smart decision for your body today which might be different than what your body gave you yesterday, and it might be different than what your body gives you tomorrow. Just like life, right? Not every day is better than the last. And last one, punches! Athletic stance. So I bend in your knees. I don't care, four to eight punches in each position. I think I do about six. Two flies, and then work your way back up. This is the end of the third round. We have one more round. You're doing great. Now we have our grand finale. Back to our tricep kickback, right? Last round. Again, if you don't feel good. Hi, I see a waiver. Hi, little kiddo. I have to say, I love seeing all the companions. With all my Zoom workouts and semis, all the dogs and cats and kids. Husbands, family members. I love the creativity with the workout spaces.
backyards, porches, laundry rooms, garages, driveways. Nice. Oh, our thigh lunge to press. Oh, by four, the fourth round. And remember, you're stepping out with your right foot. But I didn't remember. So it's a good thing I have my cheat sheet. Really thinking about those hips pulling back as you side lunge out. Letting that rotation happen from the feet and the hips. After this, we have our split squat curl to press. Right foot forward, 90-90. One goes up as the other one comes down. So also pay attention to this front foot. You should be anchored through your heel, not through the ball of your foot. The ball of the foot is working, but it should have just as much pressure as your heel. And if not, maybe your heel has even more. After this, we have a roll up. Nice. I'm rolling down my mat because I got it out of the way. Dumbbells are always reaching for the ceiling. Thinking about those abdominal scooping. Bicep by ears. Shoulders down away from your ears. We're thinking about anti-shrugging. Controlling the down just as much as the up. So I don't want to see anybody just fall, right? You're controlling and scooping those abdominals down just as much as you're controlling and scooping those abdominals up. Nice. Destabilization push-up. Last one you're doing. I'm going to roll my mat out of the way. There's your beep. Moving and a shaking, shaking and a moving. Push up. And again, just be careful. I'm coming off since I'm doing the high side plank or the high X. I'm not doing that on a dumbbell. Like I said, these dumbbells are kind of rolly. And I don't want to come crashing down. Safety, first, second, and always. Let your breath help you. You have three more seconds. Then we have our punches. See, I'm getting those arms all ready for all your summer clothing. Nice muscular arms. With all these planks and push ups, flies, punches. Slight bend in your knees. Still thinking about engaging those abs, right? That belly button's gently pulling in to turn on that transverse abdominus. Acts like a corset, wraps around you. Nice. Grab a quick drink of water. We have one more section. And then stretching. I'm gonna grab a drink of water, because I know I need it. All right, this hasn't changed for the whole four weeks. The only thing we've changed is the amount of rounds we're doing. So there's 35 seconds on the clock. 
zero seconds off. You are doing five squat, five squat down press, overhead press. Five squat down thrust overhead press. So dumbbells. If you need to do this without dumbbells, great. That's fine. Squat down. Make sure your hips are low. Fly those legs back. Make sure your core is on. I don't want to see anybody dropping in their hips. Drop your hips to come up. I don't want to see any tuchuses in the air. Up overhead press. Right. So this hasn't changed. That's your squat down overhead press. You're going for five, 35 seconds. Whatever you have left is your break. We'll see how many rounds, I was just checking the clock. We'll see how many rounds you get. Last week we did eight. I'm hoping to do 10. I think we have time. All right. I'm doing the I'm getting ready dance. <laughs> Just gets my heart right up. Oh, your marks. Get set. Go. That beats yours. You're going for five. You guys get a head start of me because I had to start the timer. Whatever you have left over is your break. So, this is a lesson in efficiency. The faster you do it, the more break you get. And round two, here we go. This is so exciting, I'm gonna open the door all the way. Let the cool breeze come in. Round three, here we go. Really thinking about dropping those hips. A, you're gonna use your glutes and hamstrings more, and it's definitely gonna make you more efficient in this. Again, since I know I have some shoulder people, you need to get rid of the overhead press. Or maybe do every other. Go for it. Hello, heart. Mine's beating. Good thing, if it weren't, I would be in much trouble. <laughs> I can't perform CPR myself. Nice. You guys are doing great. As it goes on, your rest time actually shortens and becomes a little bit more difficult. So you should start to fill that by now. But you're doing great, keep strong. You want an extra challenge, talk while you do this. It amazes me how much that changes the workout. So we're on the downside now. That's our halfway point. We have less to do than we have done. Here we go. Nice, when you're done, try to stay walking. Resist that urge to sit down. All right, I can see the finish line. Can't touch it, but I can see it. Three more 
You guys got it. Three more rounds. Last thing you're doing other than stretching. Now we're really in the home stretch. Woo! Two more to go. Two more to go. I feel it. Yeah. Keep it strong. Keep it strong. Keep it strong. You all have it. Oh man, one more round. Notice that I stopped talking during it. Can't do it. My heart's like beating out of my chest. Whew. Here we go, last one, last one. Make it your best in quality form all the way to the end. standing so we can recover that hurt a little bit. I'm going to grab a drink of water though. I encourage you to do the same. Holy moly. Okay. You can't see it but there's a little sweat pedal hover. Sweat pedal here. All right, uh, we did this last week. Um, it's not one that we do a training to be balanced, or if we have, not in my time here. So you're gonna start standing, you're gonna take one leg out, and it's like you're digging your heel in, you're pulling your toes back. Then you wanna think about hinging at your hips, like you're trying to lay your front of your pelvis on your thigh, it's not gonna get there, and I'm not collapsed down, right? I'm lengthening through my spine, supporting knee bends. Then I stand up and I switch. And you should be getting a stretch on your posterior side of the leg that's out. You might feel it in your calf. You might feel it in your hamstring. You might feel it in your glute. You might feel it in your lower back. Or numerous of those. Right? Two of the above, A and B of the above, all of the above. And we're gonna go for 10 more, for 10. And nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, I'm getting a little bit looser as I do this. Three, you might find that too. Two, and last one. Nice. Let's do um, tel telescope arms. I also call it open the book, close the book. Probably more often here. That's what I call it. I'm gonna grab my mat since it's right here. Give myself a little bit of a pillow. All right, so you're on your side, knees are in line with hips, you guys all know this one. Front arm reaches past. If you really tighten your shoulders, you might get a stretch in the shoulder that's on the ground. And then as you start to reach back, knees stay stacked. Right, so I don't want this top knee to come off. I'm keeping it stacked. And I always just kind of, I personally like putting my hand on that top knee to kind of remind myself to keep it from moving. Focus goes to the back with me. I'm letting gravity open up this front of the shoulder, the chest, 
and that whole rib cage, right? We're putting a pretty deep rotation through that rib cage or your thoracic spine that we're always talking about. And hold that stretch to the back a little bit. A lot of times I'm teaching this or training this, and people just kind of reach back and then they come back from it. Let gravity do the job. Hold it for a couple big breaths. Nice. And I want you to do one side, you have to do the other, so I'm just gonna roll on over. Or switch over, that wasn't quite a rollover. Knees in line with hips. Opening up and closing. And do one more. And then. 